Okay, oh God. the time has finally come. Monkey novels. It's the only thing left to do. And people say We've we monkey around. 20 stories to read. Right, shall we, shall we take it in turns? Yes, I was thinking. Who wants Who? to go first? I'll, I'll go first, I guess. A long, long time ago, there lived a great monkey named Monkey Taro. An old lady monkey found him after he'd been born inside a giant banana. One day... <laughs> One day, the old lady monkey and her husband gave- I can't do this anymore. Gave her three bananas and pushed him out of the door, telling him not to come back until he defeated the o- <laughs> Till he defeated the ogre that was ravaging the <laughs> capital. And don't forget the ogre's treasure, he was told. Although he'd been charged with the task of defeating this ogre character, he hadn't the slightest idea where to find him. While he was searching for the ogre, it grew dark and Monkey Taro lost his way. He decided to eat the three bananas the old lady monkey had given him. He was still hungry, but lay down at the base of a tree and slept there for the night. The next day, he tried to ask a passing boy about the ogre's whereabouts, but the boy did not understand a single word he said. Seeing, the monkey, seeing that the monkey was flustered, the boy, for some reason, handed him a dango, traditional Japanese delicacy. The half okay. sa ha <laughs> Yeah, thanks for that. I'm glad I know what a dango is now. Uh, I still don't really know what it is. But... Hey Google, what's a dango? There you go. Okay, thank hey, you. Hey Google, stop. <laughs> the half-starved monkey Taro was overjoyed and chomped away on the delicious dango without the slightest show of manners. After finishing the dango, Monkey Taro decided the young boy decided to follow the young boy for the time being, as he hadn't a clue about the ogre's whereabouts. Soon the boy met a dog, and then a pheasant, okay, <laughs> who were both <laughs> looking quite distraught. The boy gave them each a delicious dango, and helped them find their way. Is anyone Monkey else thinking Taro that dango's a really good name for my child? <laughs> Wait, I want to call my son Dango now. Don't. Th the D is silent. <laughs> <laughs> Monkey Taro was very impressed by the boy's show of kindness. After a few days, the group led by the boy and Monkey Taro rowed a boat across the sea to an island inhabited by countless ogres. This reminded Monkey Taro that it was his job to defeat the ogre. And so with the help of the boy, the dog, the pheasant, he began a fierce fight with the ogre. After a fierce fight, the band were victorious and took with them a huge amount of treasure as their own reward. After the group returned to the capital, they began bickering over dividing up the spoils. Monkey Taro put up a fight of his life, but in the end, the boy ran off with every last nugget of gold. Fearful of what old monkey- boy. Yeah, what a cheeky monkey. Fearful of the old monkey's couple's wrath, he decided against returning home, instead seeing himself to the, selling himself to the circus. Okay. I'm glad that went that way. <laughs> Where he spent the remainder of his days entertaining children with his unique low-flying chimp routine. Good. What? All right. Cool. Good what? ending. But oh, wait, wait no. there's Monkey more. Two. Who wants to do Taro 2? Um, I guess I will. <laughs> A long, long time ago, there lived an old monkey couple. They lived joyously together for many years, but they were very saddened by their lack of a child. One day, old man monkey went to the mountains to fetch bananas and old lady monkey to the river to wash pants. The old Ooh. lady monkey began doing the washing in the river, when much to her surprise, a giant banana came drifting by. A giant banana? But she wasn't hungry in the least, so it mattered little to her. Two days later, a rotting monkey was found floating near the shore further down the river. The end, that was it. <laughs> that was, what? What? Okay. Good. Glad we told the story. I mean, you your turn. Give yourself a massive editing job. I would very much like you to illustrate these stories. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh no, that'd be awful. You can make a stream of it. It'll be amazing. Wait, illustrate as in draw? No. Yes. Illustrate oh, as in. Fuck no. Oh, sorry. When you, in my brain immediately With your went wonderful to like. Ask no, my in my in my brain I was just like. Oh, just film myself like just like doing like sign language or something in the corner. You could do a Jeremy Frederick Wilson style interpretive dance. <laughs> okay, here we go. A long, long time ago, there lived a monkey who told lies all the time. He was such a terrible liar 
that all the monkeys in the town ceased to trust anything that he, weirdly big space, said. Yeah, that is odd. One day, he was busy lying, <laughs> you know, as he does. Just as he always did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the monkey who lies all the time was lying when he spotted Hikaru, thundering towards the town. He tried his best to warn everyone, Hikaru is coming, Hikaru is coming. But no matter how much he shouted and screamed, not a soul listened. So he had no choice but to run from the town by himself. Every last monkey was captured by Hikaru, and the town was finished. The liar monkey lived out his years comfortably in a far away town. Okay. The moral of the story is it's okay to lie as long as you can run away at the end. I think the moral of the story is don't tell the same lie twice. Yeah. It's the boy who cried wolf, it except is. doesn't that boy get eaten by wolves at the end? I, yeah. Yeah. Because <clears throat> no one comes but to help him. It, apparently, this is actually teaching you if you're a liar, you're fine. Yeah. <laughs> Plot twist. Monkey, no, David, wanna... your turn. Oh, God, what voice do I want to pick for this? <laughs> oh my god, like, Moncarella was, like, a beautiful monkey with, like, adorably big eyes. Like, Fair Moncarella was the pop- blah, blah, blah. Whoa, that is not easy. Fuck it. <laughs> Fair Moncarella was the most popular in the town. What? A very high price was listed on the poster of her that was found all over town? What? Okay. Uh, and then, and when the shopkeeper spotted her, they quickly closed up shop, awed by her greatness. Moncarella, quite simply, was the talk of the entire land. The end. What? No, it's not. We <laughs> <laughs> just ended there. It's just an advert. Done. <laughs> One day, the banks were giving her money, which she always, what, which she was always most As in pleased about. Philip and Vivian. <laughs> what? The banks. Fresh Prince Bella. Oh. So. In West Moncadelphia. <laughs> When a friend told her about a party, she had always wanted to pay a visit to the castle, and so she asked old wart-covered witch to prepare a magical horse and carriage. The warty old witch obliged, and her ride was secured. Moncarella crept, cre <laughs> <laughs> Moncarella crept quietly into the ground. Fuck me, this is not going well. Into the, into the grounds of the pussy palace. <laughs> <laughs> and Tristram tiddle-tattled. Uh, into the grounds of the castle, in her magic carriage. But the guardsmen simply would not leave her alone. What? The fuck, guardsmen? Respect her really personal weird. space. Every last one of them wishing for a dance with the young monkey whose hands were full of bags of gold chased after her with the utmost vehemon. Ve what the hell is that word? I have no idea what the word is, but I'm struggling to say it in this accent. What does it mean? <laughs> Never vehemence, heard vehemence. Yeah. I th am I going? Am I going to be Mr. Google today? Yes, please. Call me Mr. G. Uh, vehemence is a word that means great forcefulness or intensity of feeling or expression. Oh. Oh, this oh, is. Dear. This, this isn't. This is gross. This is yeah. There's 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 there I've are. I learned a new word. Thank you. There are overt um, overtones of like sexual abuse here. I think. Yeah. <sighs> The distressed Moncarella had no choice but to escape in her carriage, but during the fuss, she dropped her monkey helmet. The next day, the prince made an order to find the, the monkey who perfectly fitted the lost monkey helmet and bring it's her to weird the castle. Twist on Cinderella. Yeah, I'd worked yeah. that out originally, but God, it's had awful. you? <laughs> yeah, it's Moncarella. The demure well, Moncarella yeah, that makes sense. was reluctant to admit that she was the owner of the helmet, but the castle guards came to her home and insisted that she try it on. She was, dra she was dragged by both first. arms oh off to the Times God. Square. Gently. Gently. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta specify that. Yeah, no, they it was, was only it was, a little you, bit abusive. It was worrying you, before, but now How do you do fine. that, though? Like, if I was to grab you by your arms yeah, there is gently, no gently... I mean, that's like me lightly caressing your arm and hoping that you'll move because you don't want to have, like, hard touching. That's like narking. <laughs> that's just narking. Did they nark her all the way over there? I'm, I'm done. Right. 
after the town square the monkey helmet was placed on each of a long line of monkeys, standing quietly in anticipation of their fate. Soon, it was Monkalera's turn. To her it felt as the whole crowd was glaring, and frantically she would have felt much better to have left imme- oh, and frankly she would have le- felt much better to have left immediately. But when the gracious guardman wrenched her hands behind her back, she had Gently. little choice but to allow the helmet to be placed upon her. Gently. This is gross. <laughs> this is surprise, surprise. It fit her perfectly. In her heart, she was so ever pleased, but too much shy to show it. What? <laughs> I read that wrong. <laughs> Why is she pleased? <laughs> She's been know. distressed this whole time. This is She's been this forced. is written by someone who possibly doesn't understand how people react. Even monkeys. Uh, when the should guardsman... We, should we like look into the person who wrote this as backstory and like, just maybe do a background check? Or <laughs> just like, alert the... How do we ever know who wrote this? I, I think... It's perfectly anonymous. I think this guy has Probably. some... Maybe fetishes that you should act out in a consensual manner and not put it into video games with a 3 plus rating. When the guardsman began escorting her to the castle, she could no longer contain herself and tears of happiness flowed her rosy cheeks. Sorry. How dare you! After that, she would spend every spend the rest of her days living in the castle. Every last monkey was overjoyed that Moncarella had found a new, eternal home. Oh no, eternal <clears throat> home oh, sounds that's... like a prison. Yeah, it sure does. Well, that Wait, was so that lovely. story was she was going to somewhere, she got a cost she was the whole world loved her, in fact so much so that literally society would stop when it she was. It wasn't love, through. it was very clearly was, lust. Yeah. No, but uh, no, I'm talking oh, about world lusted after this hot monkey. I'm talking about at the beginning, when the shops start closing up, like society stops whenever this monkey appears because everything shuts down. But then That's not love. But then it's like creepy because all the guardmen's Oh my god, yeah. Moving well, on. It's another it's another story in the Taru series. At first I thought it said asthmatic. And now I see it says Apeshima. I don't know if that's a reference to Hiroshima. How long is it going to take to get through this? I'd imagine not. I think Shima is pretty... Yeah. But... Uh, anyway. <clears throat> a long, long time ago, there lived a young monkey named Apeshima Teru. An eccentric young primate, he spent most of his time looking... I'm really struggling to understand this. the fact that he hadn't the slightest taste for fish. Luckily, you can read it. <laughs> 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 well, that's me told. <laughs> One day, Ape Shima was walking along the beach when he spotted some young rascals tormenting a sea turtle. Jesus. Shima was usually not one for getting involved, but he simply could not pass out the chance to snatch the luscious looking banana the rascals had with them. He cast a net quite athletically upon the kids, fully entangling them. <laughs> Quite athletically. <laughs> Fully Jeffrey, entangling them. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah, oh. It's like a flashlight. <laughs> This might be the worst because of what the turtle <laughs> caught him doing. Yeah, this might be possibly one of the worst videos I've ever been a part of. Do you mean that we could read my immortal? <laughs> Too late. I feel like we are already. We yeah. have done. I've already done that. Yeah, but we should do it again. But this is worse. Yeah, no, I think so. You know what? I'm gonna stop doing this because my throat's really starting to hurt. Yeah, um, no, I mean. I quite feel that they he'd saved the turtle. No expense was spared with their sacrificial servings of sashimi and tempura, delicate raw fish, and fried vegetables. The taste <laughs> <laughs> was unbelievable. <laughs> Alas, as we know, Ape Shima didn't have a stomach for fish, and so he left it quite untouched. He as put we know. It he put in a special order for banana, but was told they had no such thing in the sea. Ishima, <laughs> thoroughly disappointed, decided to return home. Before he left, the princess gave Ishima a <laughs> gift. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> hell! 
<laughs> it actually adds to the character of the story, to be honest. It was a chance that she told him that he must never open. He was, of course, pleased by her kindness, but quite frankly, a gift that one cannot open may as well be no gift at all. <laughs> what? So, after returning to the beach, he threw it straight back into the sea, where it likely belonged, and went home. <laughs> sure. Unfortunately, for centuries, no fisherman could ever catch a single fish from the sea, into which the mysterious chest was thrown. The end. <laughs> good story. That what? was basically, don't, don't fucking... Like, if you don't understand a gift, what? be nice. What do these uh, all take place a long, long time ago in the galaxy? Presumably here. No. A long, long time ago, a professor lived all by himself. He conducted research in his home on the mountainside, but he was quite unsuccessful and never managed to create anything that earned him a single penny in income. One day, during his usual walk, the professor noticed a monkey caught in a monkey trap and crying quite miserably. <laughs> the professor felt sorry for the poor monkey, and so he freed him from the vicious trap. The monkey was overjoyed and bowed to him countless times before returning home to the mountains. That night, just as the professor was getting ready for bed, there was a knock on his door. When he answered it, he was surprised to find a little boy wearing a monkey helmet. The little boy wearing the monkey helmet had apparently lost his way <coughs> and was searching for shelter for the night. <laughs> The hearted professor gladly offered to let the boy stay at his home. Just the human centipede? Oh, no. Um, no. That is how it starts, I'm pretty sure. Oh. Except instead of a boy, it's two ladies. It's just oh. a ton of ladies. Oh, no. Right, okay. Great. Um, yeah? You know how that story the next starts? Day! <laughs> Sorry, go on. The boy told the professor that if he could stay a little longer, it would give him a chance to show his gratitude, but that the professor must never look inside his room. A uh, big red flag. <laughs> In almost no time at all, large sums of money began pouring into the professor's account, and before he knew it, his life had changed mysteriously from rags to riches. However, the professor could not help but wonder about the boy. Both day and night, a strange glow radiated from under the door of his room, and eventually the professor could not stop himself from taking a look inside. Inside the room was a little helmeted monkey staring into a glowing computer screen, which apparently existed a long, long time ago. The monkey was, in oh, was engaged in day trading, <laughs> <laughs> which was all the rage at the time. The professor quietly <laughs> closed the door. Oh no, the monkey I let into my house has been funneling Bitcoin, no. Oh dear. <laughs> The next morning, the boy didn't come out of his room. <coughs> when the professor went back into the room, all he found was a one-page letter. It read, Since you have seen my true form, I can no longer stay in your home. As my final thanks, please sell these stocks to raise some money. However, these stocks had already plump- wait. There's no speech marks. How am I supposed? No, oh. this is this is all what he's yeah. saying. However, these no, stocks had already I plummeted after an saying. embezzlement controversy and some gambling fiascos. I think this isn't him talking anymore. Doesn't matter. They yeah, they made right. the mistake. I've got yeah, to keep it did. up. Frustrated and lonely, the professor became addicted to day trading, <laughs> and was sooner poorer than he had ever been. Can we just take a, a cautionary to talk? tale? I mean. What? 
w one, he didn't know the boy was day trading, right? He made all this money. You wouldn't start day trading because why not? What? The also, why? <laughs> why I any know. of this? I don't know. I need another fucking cider after that. Fucking hell. Is this mine then? It's yours. Oh, God. Let me just let the cat out first. Otherwise, okay. I'll have the cat speaking this one. These are weird. <laughs> yes, yes they are. I knew they were going to be bizarre. I wasn't expecting this. No, there are they are quite they are quite unusual. <sighs> okay. A long, long time ago there was a monkey named Uyu Yuku Yukuyu who <laughs> resided in a temple. One day Ukyukuku was up to monkey business in the forest when the head monkey caught him. The head monk Head monk managed to use this to trick him to trick him into joining the temple. But in fact, Yuki Yukuu had an incredible intellect, so much so that even the shogun himself had taken notice of his sharp mind. To be frank, he really didn't give a monkey's about what people Wait. thought of his intellect, and could more appropriately be described as a loafer than a wise monkey. In any case, one day he was called to the castle by shogun, as he always was. In his heart of hearts, of hearts, of hearts, of darkness, of friendship, of kindness, he would rather have sat at home twindling his, twiddling his thumbs, but since he was the Shogun, he felt compelled to take notice. But he's the building that he's going to... What? Okay. <laughs> when he reached the bridge that led to the castle, there was a sign that read, The bridge shall not... You this shall, shall not... not this bridge this bridge shall not be crossed that's right isn't it this why do they have speech yeah. bubbles there speech marks even Different it's not on it it's not on a letter is it it would seem that the shogun had called upon him for a battle of intellect but as you might have guessed yukuyu wukuu couldn't care about such matters and so without skipping a beat he simply swam across the moat it didn't occur to him what the shogun had in mind what a cheeky bastard. Uwuyuhiyu reached the castle where the shogun stood before a painting, folding screen, painted folding screen awaiting his arrival. The shogun told him that every night the tiger painted on the screen would leap out of the picture and terrorize the castle, and that Ihotu Kiyukuwu would know what could be done about this. Although he kept to himself at the time, Uwuyuhiyu Really, I can't even come with alternations to say that Yukiko. name. <laughs> let's let's not. Oh, okay, okay. Why you? <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that's a mind blown. <laughs> Uq really wondered if the old shogun was one sword short of a X X X X redacted. Okay. What does that even mean? Was one sword short of a shish kebab? Some was, kind of swear word. Was one... What? Was one sword that. short of an orgy? Sure. <laughs> fuck my, yeah, fuck my <laughs> life. This is just... This is the worst one so far. Of course, the Shogun was hoping that he could challenge the famous Uki 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 intellect, but as... Oh, fucking hell. But as Yu-Gi-Oh! had the slightest... But as Yu-Gi-Oh! had the slightest interest in such games, he pulled a lighter out of his pants and set <laughs> fire to the folding screen. The fire grew to a considerable size, causing quite a panic. On the way out of the door, go Goku stopped <laughs> off at the castle vault, snatching what he could take and thus ensuring a comfortable retirement. What an asshole! The end. I thought he was going to paint boobs on it and it would just be the furry's dream. 